Coming right up, Straight Talk with Art Levine. Our guest tonight, newly elected State Senator Ted Lieu, and a report direct from Sacramento. Opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Charter Communications nor its sponsors. We recognize our obligation to present opposing points of view by responsible spokespersons. For information, please contact the director of the program. She stands in the face of evil and will not lose hope or faith. America, the land of freedom, is still the home of the brave. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. The Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We're delighted and honored to have as our guest for the entire show this evening the newly elected state senator from the 28th Senatorial District, Senator Ted Lieu. Ted, welcome to our show. Thank you. Uh, senator Lieu was elected uh, recently to fill the uh, unexpired term of the late Senator Jenny Oropesa, who we all knew so well and had such fond admiration for. Congratulations on your election. Thank you. And Senator Rapesa was a friend of mine. She was a compassionate, courageous senator. She was indeed. Uh, well, Ted, uh, let's, let's start uh, what everyone's thinking about. Uh, uh, Sacramento is in bad shape. The budget is in bad shape. We're facing a $25 billion deficit. Uh, you served three terms in the state assembly, so you're familiar with Sacramento. Uh, give us your take on the budget situation. Sure. So let me explain to you why I voted no on last year's budget. And it wasn't because I couldn't vote for hard budgets, because for years I've been doing that in the assembly. But if you remember, we had this huge uh, discrepancy between uh, what the Democrats wanted and what the Republicans wanted. It was about a four to five billion dollar gap. And then we blew past the budget deadline, months past it, and then all of a sudden we get a call saying, hey, they've solved the budget crisis. So I flew up to Sacramento, and they give the briefing, and at the end of it I said, I think you just made up the numbers. Because, Smoke and mirrors. Exactly, because what happened was the governor's office simply assumed another $4 billion or so was going to come. under the prior governor. Governor Schwarzenegger, that another $4 billion was going to come from the federal government with no basis for saying so. And I can't vote for something that's not real. With Jerry Brown, uh, he has proposed a budget that is real. If you follow what he says, largely the budget will balance. And his, Huge difference. His approach is about with the $25 billion problem, half uh, spending cuts and half continuation right. of the taxes. Exactly. And to me, that's a reasonable approach. Well, it's no secret that Sacramento is held in low respect by the populace. I think uh, the poll numbers are down to 20 percent or something respecting the state legislature. You've been in the state legislature in the assembly for six years, for almost six years. You're now in the Senate. Ironically, people tend to like their assembly right. person or a senator, but the institution is not held in high esteem. What do you attribute that to? So a couple of things. Um, one is the way that we are selected. That's why I've been one of the strongest advocates for the open primary, which is, by the way, something that my party, the Democratic Party, absolutely hates. 
the Republican Party also hates open primary. And my view is if both parties hate it this much, it's got to be good for the state of California. And I've strongly supported <laughs> open primaries here and elsewhere. And, and the reason that matters is before the open primary, only folks within the base would vote for you. But now it opens up to everybody, including independents. And under the old system, with that only party members voting, the most conservative Republicans would get the nomination and the most liberal Democrats. And we had gridlock in Sacramento. And I might add that re uh, uh, gerrymandered districts also led to the same problem. Yes, so I also was one of the few legislators that supported redistricting reform, uh, primarily because I thought it was a huge conflict of interest for me to draw my own district. I just Amen to that. It. You heard, we call it the Legislators Full Employment Act. The there way, we go. And both parties were culpable in conspiring to draw these safe districts. Correct. And so what you would have is uh, legislators that were really extreme, uh, nice people, but because of the way they were selected, they would be extremely left or extremely right, and they would not want to compromise, partly because of their own philosophy, and second, they get punished by their own districts. And ironically, in a democratic society, the legislature is supposed to reflect the political will of the populace, and the state is basically moderate, and yet the legislature was divided into the liberal function, faction and the conservative, and they were at loggerheads. And that plus the two-thirds vote for, for a budget and for taxes, and we had gridlock. Correct. And so I'm very excited that in about two to four years, these two reforms, the open primary and redistricting, should result in a better functioning legislature. Important now, structural absolutely. changes. Now, I think there are some things we can do right now to instill better confidence in elected officials. So, Such as? So, for example, a few years ago, I declined my legislative pay raise. I also... Really? Yes. I also C subsequently... Congratulations. You know... Do as I do. You know, that is so good. Thank you. Uh, subsequently, I took a voluntary pay cut before it was imposed on us. I have never had the state pay for my cell phone, and the state never will. And in one of my first official acts as state senator, you know, I was given a state gas card, and I kindly returned it back to the taxpayers. You know, as a professor of ethics as well as legal <laughs> studies, I only can say amen to that, Ted. So if more government officials led by example, I think the public would at least uh, feel better about their government. And I think that's one reason Jerry Brown uh, has done well, because he's done a lot of the actions of just eliminating what people perceive as fraud and waste and abuse. And while you're at it, when you get your, uh, when the paint dries on your office and you, <laughs> some of those state commissions that pay 100000 a year for one meeting a month, right where termed out legislators are put to uh, thrive in their post-political life might be examined. Yes, and so I supported a bill that actually looks at sunsetting uh, commissions that don't really uh, have much of a purpose. And it's funny you <coughs> that you mentioned paint. <coughs> I'm sorry, because my chief of staff came up to me and said, you know, new senators get to have the office repainted. And I said, um, is the public paying for this? And he said, yes. And I said, no, I don't want my office rebated. And so hopefully we can get through this crisis and then um, get a better confidence within uh, the government. And Governor Brown uh, is a very, very bright person yes. and with, with good political instincts. And I, I think he's approaching things in the right way and trying to address a problem that he did personally did not cause. That's correct. And he's very much engaged uh, in the weeds. I mean, he's talking on very uh, fine details. He understands the budget. He actually engages uh, stakeholders, something that our former governor uh, did not do very much of. And I think you, you're seeing a big difference because of that. Great. Well, we'll be continuing this fascinating discussion with uh, Senator Ted Lieu after we pause for these messages. Stay with us. Supported by Edison International. Californians are getting to be old hands at year-round energy conservation. Part of our special awareness of the resources we all depend on. We're making the change to energy efficient light bulbs, keeping warm weather thermostats set to a comfortable 78 degrees, and giving major appliances the afternoon off. Because when it comes to energy conservation, it all adds up. 
Life powered by Edison. Experience fast family fun at the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Six hot racing series featuring IZOD IndyCar stars, Dario Franchitti, Danica Patrick, and returning champ Ryan hunter Ray. Plus, Toyota Pro Celebrity Race, Tequila Patron American Le Mans, drifting, and more. Discover the family fun zone and new indoor zip line at the Free Lifestyle Expo. Two free Tecate Light concerts. And children 12 and under free with adults. April 15th through the 17th, come experience the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Getting kids to care about economics is easier than you think. You just need to find a connection. Like how the Port of Long Beach supports one in eight jobs in our city alone. And how the port's commitment to going green is creating even more new jobs. So the Port of Long Beach? Cool. My no texting in class policy? Not so cool. The Port of Long Beach. Investing in jobs. Investing in you. As your business searches for smart ways to save, don't forget about the one that's right in front of you. Switch to the Charter Business Bundle and you can save big without sacrificing a thing. Get reliable business telephone and high-speed internet with local support and great features. Power your business with great savings starting today. It's easy to pay less and get more. Call now and make a switch to the Charter Business Bundle.